Hey guys, so we have some news about NVIDIA's RTX 50 series, mainly the 5080 and the 5090. Now, even if you don't plan on getting one, it's not only interesting, but important to see the difference between a newer generation and the past generation. So you may actually want to watch this whole thing. There's some pretty surprising things, some possible limits to next generation. And we'll look back a little bit. For example, the 3090 was a very powerful GPU. I mean, remember we had a 2080 Ti and then a Titan GPU. So when NVIDIA launched that RTX 3090, it was like, whoa, we get this entirely new type of you know lineup that's really high end. And we thought it'd be a little better during RTX 40 series. And then we got the 4090, which was definitely pretty impressive. So the news here is that perhaps an RTX 5080, which is not the top end GPU, but the one that would come in right below a 5090, may be up to like 10% faster than the RTX 4090. Now, this is pretty important because for a few reasons, the 4090 was sometimes a little too powerful. Remember when they got banned from exports into China because of AI? That's how powerful that GPU was. But a 4090 does have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, while the 5080, we don't know exactly what its configuration is going to be, but it's likely to be GDDR7. That's a lot of Ds and Rs, but the 7 instead of 6X like the 4090, which means it's going to be more efficient. It's going to be pretty fast, but it may only be 16 gigabytes of VRAM. We don't know yet exactly where it may end up, but most likely NVIDIA may keep it just like the 4080, but make it a little bit uh, faster with the GDDR7. So that's certainly going to be one interesting point. It's more efficient, faster, so you can fit more within you know that type of scope that you're talking about. So then maybe it wouldn't get banned because it doesn't have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Who knows? But if it's 10% faster than the 4090, the other important thing, how much is it going to cost? That's what we always focus here on the channel, the value that you're getting for a particular GPU. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, VIP-CDKDeals.com, a Windows Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You want to go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. So the first 4080 was 1199. That was not a popular GPU. Even though it wasn't bad, at 1199, people just didn't really want it. They either went for a 4090 or they saved some money and went for something like a 4070 Ti or even an AMD GPU, depending where they were with their budget, you know, under a thousand dollars. So the 4080 wasn't popular, and Nvidia knows that because when they updated the GPUs with the, you know, the Super lineup, the 4080 Super, the 4080 Super didn't really change much at all. It retained the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM, basically almost the same performance as a 4080. It went up like a little bit, barely noticeable. What it did change, 4080 Super performance went up like a little bit from the regular 4080, you know, barely noticeable, not something that would be worth it as an upgrade. But what it did change was a pretty significant price run from $1199 to $999. That sort of sub $1,000 price point is pretty important in the minds of buyers and gamers and anybody who would buy that GPU. And don't forget, the 4090 has stayed pretty expensive. Like even if you look up now, they're certainly going to be in the neighborhood of, you know, over their MSRP. You're not finding them for cheaper unless you're going used. They're still, you know, sixteen to two thousand dollars, sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars. So that in most cases you end up paying almost double what a 4080 super cost. So that's what NVIDIA did with that pricing. A 5080 we would like to think that NVIDIA would keep it at $999 since they've learned their lesson from the original you know, 4080, but you never know. They could price it up again for $1199. I mean, they are doing crazy things in AI, so sometimes that can translate to them taking a few more risks in like a smaller gaming market. So not as many people will be interested perhaps in the 5080 that are not gamers because most of those people that want, you know, uh, content creation or want to use the VRAM or AI purposes may actually spring for the 5090. So I still think if I were to guess, they're going to keep it at $999. They probably, you know, would make sense in that way. That would probably be a pretty reasonable, really high-end GPU. I mean, if we're talking about a few months from now, $999 for a 5080, that's 10% faster 
than the 4090. Never mind as fast as the 4090. That's already pretty impressive because the 4090 does a lot of things really well. 1440p completely dominates it. And even 4K with ray tracing with like the OSS3 does pretty well. You add another 10% to that and a sub $1,000 price point, that could be a pretty good GPU, like a nice high-end GPU. And while specs and a price like that may not necessarily compare to, you know, the famous 1080 Ti, which at 699 was a very competent high-end GPU, for several years, at least we're getting closer. If we get 10% better than a 4090, 999, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, faster memory, you know, that's getting closer at least. Uh, it'd be nice to see 699, but 999 is where it's settled. If you think about the type of performance you can get for that, you know, 4K, really, you know, ray tracing, high textures, uh, you know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's not exactly perfect for the most high-end gaming. For that, you definitely do want a 1590 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, but it's enough where you'll keep things under control. It shouldn't really, you know, it's not gonna destroy a 4K gaming experience, for example. If you wanna push beyond 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's gonna depend on certain games, and you're gonna to wanna to have to like really, really crank up those settings. I think most people can get away with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Not any less for 4K. I think 16 is probably the minimum, but yeah, kind of beats having to spend twice the money for you know, something that's going to be 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's where we're at. 50, 80, 10% better than uh, you know, a 4090. Definitely could be a pretty good GPU for $1,000. The 5090, if it's you know, that much better than a 4090, I mean, we've seen some reports where it could put a 5090 like 50 to 70% better than something like, um, you know, a 4090. I don't know if it's gonna be that high. It may end up being something more reasonable. If the, you know, the 5080 is already 10% better than the 4090, you can bet you may see numbers at least 25, 30% and above. Obviously it's gonna depend on the game. NVIDIA likes to push the LSS3. Who knows what type of AI software they may come up with in the future also that may improve performance even further. But certainly performance-wise, I think it's looking pretty good for these next generation GPUs. As long as availability good and pricing is good i think they may be some i think they may be some pretty strong gpus that may get people to upgrade definitely from you know the 30 series you're going to get a huge jump and maybe even some 40 series owners 4090 usually those owners may just go for a 5090 if budget allows because then i think maybe a 5080 will be a little bit too close to the actual price of and performance of what their 4090 is. So then something like a 5090 will make sense. All right, guys, so let me know what you know down below. Don't subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.